Well, thank you all. Well, I've just returned from visiting uh, the Governor who has accepted uh, my advice that the House of, Sem of Assembly be dissolved and that a general election be held on Saturday the 23rd of March. Can I say uh, very clearly, this election is about who is best able to restore uh, stability and certainty so Tasmania can take action on the issues affecting you right now. We do have a strong plan, which is all about addressing these important issues, but the parliament has become unworkable. I'm not going to allow myself or my government to be held to ransom for the next 12 months. It's bad for Tasmania and it's bad for Tasmanians. So I've taken the decision to call an election so that Tasmanians can have their say. Tasmania has come a long way over the last 10 years under majority Liberal government, led by Will Hodgman, Peter Gutwin, myself and our team. Under our plan, we have gone from the worst performing state to the best performing state on most economic measures. We have delivered historically low unemployment and 53,000 new jobs have been created. Construction of the new Bridgewater Bridge is underway and the first of two new Spur of Tasmania ferries will soon sail into Devonport. And we've done all this and much more while maintaining the lowest debt of all the states and without introducing any new taxes. But I understand that, like the rest of Australia, we are facing some serious challenges right now. We've delivered an additional 298 hospital beds. We've employed an extra 2,500 frontline health professionals, including 1,000 390 nurses. But there's more work to do with our health system and we can do better. Our energy prices are already the lowest in the country and our renewable energy dividend is driving bills lower. But I know that we need to do more to support those struggling, of course, with the cost of living challenges. And while we've built and building a record number of homes, including 3,000 new homes since 2019. I recognise that for many Tasmanians, their first home lies beyond their reach and rents are still too high. So we've done a lot, but there's more to do. That's why we've developed our strong plan for Tasmania's future to address these issues. It's our 2030 Tasmania plan, and it's all about how the Tasmanian government can take more pressure off you. It's a strong plan, which is all about taking more action on the issues affecting you right now, such as cost of living, such as health, and such as housing. Importantly, we'll be taking action straight away with my Liberal government ready to deliver key parts of the plan immediately so Tasmanians can feel those benefits sooner. And over the course of the election campaign, of course, we'll be releasing more details. As I said at the outset, there's a lot more to do. And there's also a lot at risk. Labor's been in opposition for a decade but the truth is, Labor and Ms White still haven't learned the lessons from the disastrous deal with the Greens, and they are not ready to govern. Never forget that under a Labor-Green minority government, 10,000 jobs were lost in Tasmania. Unemployment neared 8 per cent. The forest industry was shut down. 
$1.5 billion superannuation fund was raided and hundreds of nurses and police were sacked and they tried to close 20 schools. Ms White and Labor sits on the fence on every major issue and they have no credible plan for the future of Tasmania. Labor's infighting, disunity is so bad they've had only been just given their training wheels back from Canberra. It's pretty simple. If Labor can't govern themselves, they can't govern Tasmania. The Liberal position is clear and consistent. We know majority government is the best thing for our state and past experience proves just that. Minority government is destabilising, it destroys confidence and it is bad for our state and it is bad for Tasmanians. And I've heard our opponents say otherwise, but the fact is only we, only the Liberals can credibly claim to be seeking majority government at the next election and you all know that. The only way Labor could conceivably form even a minority government is by doing a deal with the Greens. And we know they will, given half the chance. So the choice is crystal clear. A majority government led by me with our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future. Or a Labor, Green, Lambie, independent coalition of chaos, which would destroy our economy destroy jobs and crash our health system once again. We have so much to lose by electing a coalition of chaos and so much to gain and continue the momentum with the majority Liberal government. Questions? Elections about certainty and stability. The past term has seen resignations from your team, from your cabinet, two premiers and a second straight early election. How can you credibly make the promise that the Liberals offer credibility or certainty at this point? Well, I point to our record uh, very clearly since 2014, uh, when we came into government on the back of uh, 10,000 job losses, where we had a Labor-Green government uh, that sacked a nurse a day uh, for nine months of the year. They tried to close uh, 20 schools in rural and regional communities. We have built Tasmania. We have turned Tasmania around. 50, 53,000 new jobs have been created and unemployment is at record levels. And uh, we're matching it with the rest of the country when it comes to our economic credentials. This is a result of a long-term plan staying the course under Will Hodgman, Peter Gutman, myself and our team where we still have record low unemployment, job creation, construction going gangbusters, and despite the challenges, we're maintaining that course. And we were elected in 2021 uh, to deliver majority government, and we seek a re-election in 2024 to continue our long-term plan. One state election, he voluntarily uh, offered that the Liberal Party would disclose all political donations over five thousand dollars received during the campaign. Will you do a sim make a similar commitment? And well, not, we've changed, of course, legislation uh, that's going through its implementation stage now, uh, but we will be uh, guided by the current laws. But voluntarily disclose as Peter Gutman uh, will did be in 2021. The current laws. Feel against minority government there. Will you, will you not govern in minority? Well, the only party that can win a majority government, quite clearly, is uh, the Liberal Party. Uh, but I will respect uh, the outcome uh, and the will of the voters and do so with that respect and uh, that maturity. Uh, we will govern alone or not at all, and we will not do a deal with the Greens. I want to be very, very clear about that. There will be no deals 
with the Greens. We are poles apart. They're the job destroying party. We create jobs. Uh, we uh, create wealth. We fund those essential services. And we've seen uh, the result of Labor Green deals. Uh, I will not be doing a deal uh, with the Greens. But I will respect the outcome of the election and the will of the voters and, uh, and of course, uh, have the maturity, of course, uh, to govern sensibly on the best, in the best interests of uh, all uh, Tasmanians. Uh, when it comes to everyone else, and I've made my position very clear when it comes to uh, the Greens, there, when it comes to everyone else, uh, some key principles will apply. I will not agree uh, to anything that constrains me or uh, my government. I will not be trading ministerial positions or policies. And the 2030 uh, strong plan is not negotiable. So those three key principles. But as I say, I will treat the outcome of the election and the will of the voters uh, with respect and maturity. Premier, you've, already gone. you've talked about um, you know, dealing with the result of the election with respect to maturity and so on, but you can't deal with two ex-members of your own party. What makes you think you could possibly deal with you know, Greens, Lambie, Independents from, from across the political spectrum? I mean, it's a fantasy, isn't it? Well, uh, two ex-members of our party were elected as Liberals in the 2021 uh, election uh, on a majority government platform on the policies we took to uh, the election. Uh, we have uh, done our best over the course of the last uh, 12 months or since the defection uh, to govern uh, in the best interests of uh, Tasmanians. Clearly, uh, with the comments by both the two independents have made that uh, uncertainty and I've frankly uh, had enough. Uh, Tasmanians have had enough. Uh, I won't be held to ransom and that's why I seek re-election uh, to govern in majority in the best interests of all Tasmanians. Lara Alexander, John Tucker, isn't it a fact that you can't keep your own party on side, let alone other parties? Well, we had two members that left our party. Uh, they were elected in uh, majority government in 2021. I'm seeking an election in 2024 for majority government. We're the only party that can achieve uh, majority government and we will deliver on all the promises and the plan, the 2030 strong plan for uh, Tasmania. How do you deal with the in office? You've left a lot of things unfinished, including particularly the response to the Commission of Inquiry. I'll look at our record day very clearly and where we've come from, uh, where we were economically, uh, our confidence has increased dramatically, our state and indeed uh, Tasmanians. Uh, I recognise uh, that when it comes to our health system, as I said, uh, we can do better, but the evidence is there that we've done a lot and we've employed uh, 2,500 more frontline health professionals, 1,390 more nurses, uh, rebuilt uh, the Royal Hobart Hospital rebuilding other hospitals. That's the health system. Our education system, we've invested in our schools and rebuilding schools across the state. And we're absolutely fundamentally committed to implementing uh, all the 191 Commission of Inquiry recommendations. And I understand having spoken and listened to, most importantly, uh, victim survivors, how important the implementation of the Commission of Inquiry recommendations and more is to them, their families and their loved ones. And as I said very clearly at the release of the report, I just don't want to release the recommendations. I don't want us to implement the recommendations. I want this to be nation leading. And uh, the election is happening and all the work will continue, even though the election is going through the course. Uh, I have made very certain uh, that all the work to implement the 191 recommendations uh, will continue. What about the work of the Provision of Information Committee, though uh, they say it's disappointing they won't be able to hold hearings without expecting to come to yourself and Jenny Cale? 
uh, we have always been uh, available for uh, scrutiny uh, across a number of areas uh, in the Tasmanian Parliament uh, and uh, will continue to be so. And uh, what's important to me is to ensure that we implement all the Commission of Inquiry recommendations and ensure that uh, the failures of the past are never, ever repeated. That's my focus. And uh, we've never shied away from uh, scrutiny. Uh, we've had enormous scrutiny when it comes to a range of issues and indeed uh, the Commission of Inquiry uh, more particularly and importantly. Uh, but my commitment to implementing every single one of those 191 recommendations and more and be nation leading when it comes to the protection of our children uh, is my key uh, priority as I've said before. There's a chance you may end up completely out of government here. Uh, when you look at where we've come from, when you look at what we've done and when you look at our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future, I am sure Tasmanians will want a majority government to continue uh, that momentum, continue uh, a government that fights for jobs, supports rural and regional uh, Tasmania, uh, stands up uh, for jobs right across rural and regional Tasmania, particularly our primary industry sector, which many feel are under th threat right now. And I am convinced when uh, Tasmanians look at where we've come from in the health system, our education system, uh, the police on the beat. They will understand uh, the value of a long-term plan since 2014 uh, that has delivered for Tasmanians. Yes, like every other state of Australia, there are challenges. Uh, we can do better in our health system. I want to do better when it comes to our numeracy and literacy rates of our young people in our schools. I want to do better when it comes to community safety. And the Tasmanian 2030 uh, strong plan for our future will deliver just that. Will there be a selection be a referendum on the AFL stadium? Sorry, will there selection be a referendum on the AFL stadium? No. And to what extent, on, on partly, I take that, that question, you know, should voters, why should voters not see that you are running away from, running away from a difficult budget, running away from Christians over the AFL Stadium, you know, running away from uh, from Christians over Marinus, all the all the areas of uncertainty that you've left behind? Why should voters not conclude you're just simply giving up and running away? Uh, because I'm running forward. I've always uh, run forward, Matt. Uh, I've always been to, keen to tackle uh, the challenges and the big issues facing Tasmania. And uh, that's why I want to continue uh, to deliver on our long-term plan, uh, continue uh, to deliver our 2030 uh, strong plan for uh, Tasmania and continue uh, the momentum where we've come from in the last, uh, 20, the last 10 years, of course. And so uh, I am as keen as mustard uh, to ensure that we have the election, we get back a majority, and we continue uh, to fight for Tasmanians and do the good things and continue that momentum that we've seen over the course of the last 10 years. Premiers have left midway through a term. Do you commit to staying for the full term of government if you're elected? Yes. Yep. I've been asked that a lot. Yes, and I will. You spoke about your legacy, and yet you know people in Hobart and, and one sister are unable to get a bus, unable to get seen at a hospital um, in a timely way. Um, you know, still got only 53% attainment of um, Year 12. I mean, you've had 10 years to get this stuff right, and it's got worse. So why should voters, uh, you know, view you favourably after 10 years of failure? Well, when it comes to elective surgery waiting lists that have come down as a result of our significant investment. Uh, we are and have rebuilt hospitals, uh, health facilities uh, across uh, Tasmania. Uh, we've rebuilt schools. Ten years ago, as Education Minister, I was visiting schools that were crumbling around the students and the teachers' ears. And we've rebuilt schools. We're building new schools and indeed have a very strong plan and investment to improve our literacy 
rates here in Tasmania to support our young people. We've invested in the years 11 and 12. And the strength of the economy, uh, Matt, has meant that we have more kids, young people in training, which is great. We've changed the law to ensure that Tasmanian young people have to complete year 12 or they turn 18 or engaged in uh, vocational education and, and training or have a full-time job. And the strength of the economy has delivered uh, for young people and has delivered uh, for families. And I'm proud of what we have achieved, but I acknowledge we've got a lot more to do. One of your Franklin candidates? Uh, that will depend on uh, the election process and indeed uh, Ms Petrusma herself. You've I'm not going to half the amount of candidates that you need. You've only got five and a half weeks before polling day. Are you confident you'll have a full suite? Absolutely. I'm very excited about uh, the people that have stepped forward uh, and uh, willing uh, to represent not only their electorates but uh, the people of Tasmania. Will you, uh, will you step aside if the Liberal vote goes backwards and if not, why not? Well, um, I'll be uh, stepping uh, up to the plate like I always do, Matt, and ensuring that we have a re-election of a majority uh, Liberal government uh, with a strong uh, 2030 plan for Tasmania's future. But if you were confident, as you say, uh, you, would, you would say yes to that question, wouldn't you? I am confident. I am confident that we'll get back in majority government because uh, when you look at our long-term plan, what it's delivered since 2014, when you look at our 2030 strong plan for Tasmania's future, I am convinced uh, that Tasmanians will see uh, the opportunity of moving forward or a coalition of chaos uh, with a coalition of uh, Labor, the Greens, uh, Lambie and Independents. And that's not good for our health system, it's not good for our economy, and it's not good for jobs. Jackie. Rebecca White's already promised $400 a year off people's power, point, power bills if Labor is elected. Are you confident that the government's power policy is going to be able to win votes after such significant increases in the last couple of years? Uh, look, I'm not into gimmicks, as I understand the Labor Party were out today uh, with their gimmicks. I'm into plans. I'm into strong plans for uh, Tasmania's future, and our 2030 uh, strong plan for Tasmania's future is just that. Uh, we have among the lowest energy prices in uh, the nation, uh, but I recognise the cost of living pressures on uh, Tasmanians, which is why we have reached in uh, to support particularly vulnerable Tasmanians when it comes to their energy bills and indeed other cost of living challenges as well. The fact is, uh, Labor cannot be believed. Federal Labor promised $275 reduction in power bills. That's nowhere to be seen. And now, frankly, it's a gimmick uh, that Rebecca Wyatt and Labor are promising $400. Do you feel... Uh, sorry, how much of this um, AFL project is going to be a part of your election campaign? And are you worried that if Labor get in that they're going to put that project at some sort of risk? Uh, well, it's very clear that uh, we achieved in May last year, uh, a long-held dream for decades for Tasmania to have their own uh, AFL and AFLW team. That has been achieved uh, by uh, the very good deal between the AFL and uh, Tasmania. So that's at risk under Labor. And again, on all the major issues, uh, they've sat on the fence. They are not prepared to draw a line in the sand, like I have done repeatedly, stating my position on key issues uh, such as uh, the AFL and associated infrastructure, which is exciting uh, for uh, Tasmania. Well, I'm open to conversations, as I said, and uh, I've always respected the will of the election, uh, the voters, and we need to respect uh, the will of the people uh, with that respect and that maturity. Uh, yes, I'm open to conversations, but on key principles. I will not be trading away our 2030 plan for Tasmania. I will not be trading away Liberal policies. I will not be trading away uh, ministries. Uh, we can govern in majority. That's my aim. 
that's what I'm fighting for, and that's what has put Tasmania in the very best of stead uh, since 2014. Laura, Laura. John. Because you couldn't make a minority government work with the two independents that were closely aligned with the party, which they were originally part of your party. Why would it be any different in a 35-seat parliament, which is likely to return a minority? Well, um, I'll be heading for majority. Uh, that's my intent. Uh, and our 2030 uh, strong plan for uh, Tasmania, in my view, is uh, the only plan that will take Tasmania forward. So I will be de delivering uh, majority. Uh, and I don't want to go over old ground in terms of the two uh, independents, uh, but uh, I respect the will of the people uh, in a respectful and mature way. And it's important that Tasmanians have their say, and I look forward to them having their say on March the 23rd. How is your attitude to, your attitude to um, I don't want to call it power sharing, but dealing with the minority government situation that you've outlined today, how is that different to or incompatible with what John and Lara have offered? They've offered their original deal, which is essentially a carte blanche to, to, govern, um, to, to govern as you want, really. Well, no. Um, threatens of no confidence motions when Parliament returns on March the 5th. What, what does, not John, John does not provide, uh, and repeated again, uh, that is not what is in the best interest of uh, Tasmania. Tasmanians deserve uh, certainty and stability. That's what we're about. That's my intention. That's why I'm calling the election, to restore uh, certainty and stability for Tasmania and Tasmanians. So we can get on with the job, frankly, of continuing uh, the growth in our economy, continuing uh, to employ more than the 53,000 jobs that we've created over the course of the last uh, 10 years and to continue uh, to deliver uh, health services that Tasmanians absolutely thoroughly deserve. Cost of living, health and housing are key concerns for Tasmanians, they're key concerns for my, me. Uh, we have come a fair way but we have more to do. I'm looking forward uh, to the Tasmanian people having their say. Uh, I'm not going to get any, to any hypotheticals or reasons why people uh, have decided to uh, leave the parliament. Uh, what I'm excited about is a team, a Liberal team, uh, and every electorate around Tasmania uh, champing at the bit uh, to be elected and champing at the bit to make a difference, not only for their local constituencies, and electorates, but for the people of Tasmania. How stable will your leadership be with Eric Abetz as a member of uh, your party room? Very. Very stable, man. All right, thanks all. Appreciate it.